was. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> My one dry rag that I had to hunt down. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, gosh, we're live. It is 6 o'clock on Thursday. Uh, welcome, everybody. Hello, Chef. Hello. Hi. How's it going? You know. You know exactly how it's going. I do. I do know <laughs> how it's going. I've been here all day, too. <laughs> Oh gosh, I think we should start with this. Yeah. Let's do that. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome. Welcome. Mm. Thursday night, six o'clock, we means there's bubbly. Yeah. Or some form of adult beverage happening in our kitchen here at Well Season. I'm Angie. This is uh, Chef Tessa. And um, yeah, it's been kind of a busy week around here. It's always a busy week. I know. It's we, just... like, we keep thinking, like, you know what? Next week is a little bit more tame. <laughs> and then we're here. I think, you know, <laughs> when we were doing these classes uh, with Dennis, and Dennis and I would talk about how busy it is here and, you know, what's going on. And everybody's like, oh, that's good for you guys. I'm glad you're busy. But I don't think anybody really believes it. No. Like, I think people think Dennis was just complaining. Well, I mean... Well, he was doing that too. No, I'm teasing. But it is it is busy here, and we're grateful that you guys are keeping us busy. Absolutely. So thank you for that. Um, this weather, my God, last week we did soup, so hopefully you guys have had a chance to recreate some of Tessa's uh, recipes at home. I know we had a lot of people uh, interested in the red lentil curry. Oh, good. Soup, so hopefully you guys had a chance to make that at home. And um, tonight we're talking all things pumpkin before it goes out of style well this is <laughs> the last official few days of pumpkin bless you jenna um this is the last few days that we're talking about the p word here because yep. i'm kind of i get pumped pumpkined out right after thanksgiving pumpkin pumpkin <laughs> out out um so we have a few pumpkin scones left in our freezer and that's our last batch of pumpkin scones so if you're addicted to those you know, here's your uh, fair warning that when they're gone, they're gone. They're gone. I might, uh, I might whip up a batch of pumpkin soup tomorrow. Cool. And that'll be the last. No more pumpkin on these hands. No more. No more. Um, so I think part of the reason that we decided to do this class is because everybody's going to have a lot of pumpkin around this weekend mm -hmm. because it's Halloween. And it is possible to cook a carved pumpkin. Yeah. So I don't want you to think you have to waste your carved pumpkin. Um, you can always take it out to, I know Critter Care here in Langley will take your carved pumpkins because all of their um, little um, homeless raccoons will eat them. I think even the zoo will take the yeah. carved pumpkins and they'll feed them to the animals at the zoo. But you can feed them to your own animals at home. Yes. Um, and you can cook a carved pumpkin. As long as you're not burning some weird flavored candle inside um, the pumpkin, you can yeah. still cook with it, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And as long as there's no, you know, excessive amounts of wax in there. I mean, if there's a little bit of wax, it wouldn't bother me, but that's because I'll eat pretty much anything. Just pick it out. Just pick it out. You'll be fine. Yeah. You're not. And the lid, if you put the lid on and the lid is all incinerated from the candle that's burning, don't cook that part, but yeah. the rest of the pumpkin is perfectly safe to eat. Um, so you guys all missed Tessa, you know, hollowing out the pumpkin. It was pure glamour. I'm just going to tell you. Yeah, it really was. How awesome that was. She was elbow deep in this giant pumpkin pulling out all the <laughs> seeds. Um, I know there's a few recipes on our website to um, deal with pumpkin seeds mm -hmm. uh, from, the, from the raw pumpkin and, and cook them, roast them from raw. What's your feeling on uh, homemade pumpkin seeds? And it's a bit of an ordeal. It, if you've got the time, go for it. But if you uh, are a regular, I shouldn't say regular, that's not fair. If you uh, are someone who just kind of takes your pumpkin and you might roast it afterwards, like maybe, I would say don't bother with the seeds. The other thing with the seeds too is you need to boil them and then cook them. You gotta clean them, get all the string off, boil them, roast them, and then do something else with it on top yeah. of it. And they also, they tend to go stale really quickly. Right, so I normally don't hang on to them. I might every once in a while, but I mean this morning when I was hollowing all that out, the last thing that I wanted to do was sit there and pull every little piece of pumpkin yeah. string. It's an off ordeal. Of the seed. It's a, yeah. So you can buy raw pumpkin seeds mm -hmm. at the supermarket, the health food store, and you can do all kinds of really great things with them. You can roast them yourself. You can buy raw or roasted. Um, I like to buy raw because I like to be able to toast them myself. Yeah. Um, so tonight you're using store-bought pumpkin seeds. You're yes. not, you didn't bother with, <coughs> oh, excuse me. 
Oh, excuse me. Um, you didn't bother with the seeds from the actual pumpkin um, that you, uh, from, from the fresh pumpkin that, mm -hmm. that you removed. Those went into the garbage. Um, so tonight we're utilizing the whole pumpkin except for the seeds. But if you are feeling ambitious or you've got a bunch of kids there that want to see how that works, fill your boots, uh, roast your pumpkin seeds. But like Chef said, you've got to wash them really well, pull all the string off and then boil them and then roast them. Yeah. So yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> pumpkin seeds at the store are like uh, a dollar a pound or something yeah. really inexpensive. So yeah. Um, anyhow, so what's cooking tonight? What are you making? Well, I'm going to start us off by showing you guys how to make a nice little pumpkin seed pesto, a pita pesto. Um, so it's a nut-free version of a pesto. We're going to yeah. be using uh, lots of herbs in there, Parmesan. Then I'm going to show you guys a savory pumpkin spread um, that you can make, almost like a dip that you can top uh, some crostinis with and uh, you can make kind of a big platter. I'm going to have a little bit of garnish that goes on there. There are some candied pumpkin seeds that I did that I'll talk about. And then we're going to wrap things up with some pumpkin gnocchi and a little butter sage sauce. That'll be the yeah. last thing that we're putting together. Cool. Yeah. Uh, when we talked about this class and we talked about doing the pumpkin um, crostinis, I was sort of thinking pumpkin hummus, sort of that sort of yeah. idea. And this is a kind of a lighter version, I guess. Yeah of a pumpkin hummus, but you could certainly puree your chickpeas and yeah. um, with pumpkin. And just because it's pumpkin doesn't mean it has to taste like, taste like pumpkin pie. Yeah, exactly. Um, you can season it however you want. It, it's really one of those, I don't know, one of those veggies like that's super versatile. It is yeah, a squash. It, it's squash. It tastes yeah. just like squash. So, But I think people think it has to taste like pumpkin pie or pumpkin, or pumpkin spice. spice. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. So you can do all kinds of really cool things um, mm -hmm. with it. So, uh, is tonight's menu completely vegetarian? It is, I yep. think. Wow, it is. It cool. is a vegetarian menu. Okay, yeah. cool. That was a bit Surprise. of an accident, but that's okay. <laughs> um, vegetarian food is delicious, too. Uh, we do enjoy our bacon around here, but uh, vegetarian food is also very good. So, um, just like every other Thursday night, uh, Jenna's going to pop the link to the recipes into the comment section so you can see them there. Um, these are all recipes that you can make this weekend for your big um, Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving for your big uh, Halloween, Halloween soiree. Um, so um, you can download the recipes, print them off, and then you can make all this tomorrow night because you know you probably have nothing else going on. You might as well make pumpkin uh, everything. 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 Um, this week, since you is since you guys are joining us right now. Um, we have been doing these classes uh, on Thursday nights. This is our second class this fall. And we asked you last week about the time, um, switching from 5.30 to 6 o'clock. And I think everybody, like the majority of people, really wanted a 6 p.m. class. But I have to tell you guys that we're going to make one more change. We're going to move our online classes back to Wednesdays. We are getting really busy just ramping up for the holidays and truthfully a full day here Thursday, Thursday night and then a really busy Friday is just a lot packed into the last couple days of the week. So I'm going to move this back to Wednesday. Um, it's mostly because Tessa drinks too much and can't, you know, she, tomorrow's a You're problem You're not supposed for to her. tell them so that. <laughs> it's not Tessa. It's not Tessa. So uh, anyhow, we're going to move the class back to Wednesday night. So starting next week, the class will be here Facebook Live Wednesday at six o'clock so hopefully you guys can still join us um, the weather's really terrible so i'm sure you know you guys like us don't have a lot of other things to do on a wednesday night so we're hopeful that we'll see you here um, on wednesdays instead of thursdays mm -hmm. starting next week yep how's the vino chef uh i mean i'm very much enjoying it i am plowing through it you know i love sparkling wines i love bubbles so it is very hard to upset me if there's a glass of sparkling wine in front of me but I, I, I know nothing. I know nothing about Lakeside. Cellars. So Lakeside Cellars nothing. is um, another BC wine. This one's from um, Lakeshore Drive in a Soyuz. So this is Southern Okanagan. Okay. Um, Lakeside makes really delicious wines. We drink a lot of their whites, well, their whites, reds, and this is the bubble. I'm not sure the status of the availability of the bubbles, but Jenna can pop a link to their website. You can buy the wine directly from the winery and it's available at some BC specialty stores but it's really excellent value i think this bubbly is like 22 or 23 oh, dollars nice. and it's super easy to drink it's a little bit dry but i think it'll be really delicious with the pumpkin uh, especially the gnocchi which is what i was really thinking about when mm -hmm. i brought this um, in today 
Um, and I normally I think I would have done you know a, a still white with this, but I don't know. I don't, it, I just I love bubbly, and I know Chef loves bubbly. So um, Melanie's even hanging around. She's gonna have a glass with us. So yeah. oh, why not? Uh, so anyhow, you can pop onto Lakeside Cellar's website and check out all of their delicious wines. Their reds are stellar, and we'll have those at some point. But um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, they're really delicious. So as usual, if you have questions while Chef is cooking, feel free to type them into the comment bar, and we'll relay your questions on to Chef. But I think um, we're ready to get cooking. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Let's do, do it. Do a little splash before I, I go. A spl well, like, you know, like, a, up. like a pour. You All know. right. Oh, a pour, pour. All right, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> oh, happy chef, happy life, right? Exactly. So, pumpkin. Um, if you are going to roast your pumpkin, I just kind of want to give you a forewarning. I asked for a small pumpkin. Did I get a small pumpkin? No, I got a regular big old pumpkin. I roasted it. For these recipes, I only needed two cups of pumpkin. The entire pumpkin, once I roasted it, yielded about 20 cups of pumpkin. So that's why I'm going to be making soup tomorrow with the rest of it. So just know that when you are roasting your pumpkin, especially if it's you know, quite a thick one, you are going to get a lot of yield out of it. You're going to have a lot of pumpkin to work with. Um, so make sure you hang on to it. Now, for the pumpkin itself, all I did, I aggressively ripped it open with a serrated knife scooped out all the seeds, and then I quite literally just kind of hacked at it and cut it into smaller manageable pieces, um, about yay big, and I doused it in olive oil, salt, pepper, threw it in my oven at 400 degrees, and I just let it roast. Um, it was in there for about 45 minutes, and then I'll just check it with a knife, make sure it's nice and soft, pull it out, let it sit, and then once it's completely cool, you can scoop the flesh out, and, and then that's it, and you're good to go. Um, pumpkin is from the squash family so it does have all those same notes of squash meaning it's excellent in savory applications um, the trickiest part about this evening will be the pumpkin gnocchi because pumpkin does have a lot more moisture to it than um, a traditional potato gnocchi but um, i've got it hung and off to the side and i'll talk a little bit more about that when i get to it but i'm going to start us off by making a little bit of pesto so We've got some usual suspects here that you would see with your pesto. Um, instead of pine nuts, I am going with pumpkin seeds um, or pepitas at the store. So these have been boiled, dried, roasted, and these ones are salted. Um, so there are these little green pumpkin seeds here. Great alternative for nut allergies. If anyone has a nut allergy but they love pesto, use pumpkin seeds instead. You're gonna get the same kind of texture that you would get from the pine nuts. And, um, and it's got a very kind of muted flavor, so it's not gonna take over anything. We're still loading this with basil. I've got a little bit of parsley I'm gonna add in and some green onion. And then garlic, Parmesan, olive oil, lemon. So all of the same kind of regular ingredients you'd find in your pesto, but we're swapping out the pine nuts for the pumpkin seeds. So, so it's pretty much all just gonna go into the food processor here. I've got, this is half a cup of pumpkin seeds. That's gonna go in there. I've got a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese that has been finely grated. That's not all of the Parmesan cheese, Tessa. Hold on, there we go. Okay, I've got some olive oil here. So this is about half a cup of olive oil. That's gonna go in. Uh, an entire clove of garlic. I'm just going to kind of trim it a little bit, take that woody end off, but this is just gonna get pureed, so I'm not gonna worry too much about um, mincing it, breaking it down. I really just wanna get that little root end off of there. That's all I'm really worried about. That'll go in. I've got about a cup of basil that's packed underneath here, and a quarter cup of parsley. This is flat leaf Italian parsley. Uh, anytime I'm using parsley, I think about what I'm using it for to, de to decide if I'm getting curly or flat leaf. Flat leaf parsley is not as strong in flavor as curly parsley. So curly parsley, if you want parsley to be the, curly parsley, if you want parsley to be the star of the show, you know, tabbouleh, um, anything like that, you go for curly because it's nice and pungent. If you just want to have a soft note of parsley, go for flat leaf, Italian flat leaf, so it doesn't take over. That's funny. I find uh, flat leaf parsley to be quite strong. 
Really? I guess it depends on the plant itself, but yeah. um, I, I love the flavor of parsley. I, I cook with it a lot. I, I do use it a lot. Yeah. It's in almost everything it's that cheap, I cook. It's always available. Yep. Um, and it's so fresh. I, I always have it in the fridge at home. I love yeah. it. Uh, um, Chef Virginia wants to know if you've ever roasted a whole pumpkin. Like, like just take the pumpkin and like put it in the oven? Sure. Yeah, let's go with that. No. Um, I've, I've taken a whole pumpkin and cut it in half and roasted it that way. But I've never roasted a pumpkin without breaking it open and taking the seeds out. Yeah, I have. Yeah, uh, I've roasted a whole squash like that. I've um, roasted squash that way. So it would work for a pumpkin. It would work for a pumpkin. There, if You just probably have to take a couple racks out of your oven. But it would work for a smaller pumpkin for sure. I've never done it with a big pumpkin. But I mean, I've done it with butternut squash. Yeah. I've done it with acorn squash uh, as well. So in theory, it should work. Yeah, um, it's just going to take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. The process of breaking it down is really just to speed up the cooking time. Um, if I had more time, I could have, you know, left it whole and just kind of have it do its thing. But I wanted to get it kind of in and out as fast as I could. We have very limited oven space here, so we got to work somewhat efficiently. Not that I know what that is, but I'm working on it. I'm getting there. So I added a little bit of green onion in there. We've got a lemon here. I am going to zest the entire lemon and then juice half. But when it comes to lemon zest, I love lemon. I'm a big fan of lemon. So I always opt to use a little bit more zest um, than some may. If you don't want it to be too lemony, then just zest about half of it in there. The lemon zest is really what's gonna add the flavor, right? All of the, um, a lot of the flavor is in the oils in the skin. And then the juice is gonna add that nice acidity that we're looking for to balance everything out. So Virginia says it's easier to cut up when it's cooked, which is totally true. Uh, yeah. Cutting up a pumpkin can be, well, lots of squash can be a real beast. They're yeah. so hard. You have to be really careful. You do. That's why I used a serrated knife. And, uh, and I'm generally quite careful because uh, trying to break through a big pumpkin, you do risk you could injure yourself pretty yeah. badly. Actually, the one injury that my partner has, uh, he's got a really gnarly scar on his arm. It's not from being in a kitchen. It's from carving a pumpkin when he was in his 20s. There may have been alcohol involved, um, but he definitely injured himself via pumpkin carving. He did not win the contest that year. That's special. Um, yeah, he's a special man. He's a special man. So we're finding out if I have any cuts on my hand right now. I don't. Not on this hand, anyway. I'm going to add a little sprinkle of salt and some black pepper. Pop the lid on, and we're just going to let this guy go until so it's nice and smooth. I do have a spatula handy so I can scrape my sides down as I'm going, should I need to. Okay. And it really doesn't take long. And pesto is one of those things. I always have pesto at home. I always have pesto at home uh, because it's super easy to kind of whip dinner together with a lot of flavor. I do eat a lot of pasta at home. Um, despite the fact that I am actually gluten intolerant, I do still eat a lot of gluten. Um, so I always have pesto kicking around to throw into my pasta. After a long day of work, it's a nice quick dinner. And this is a good nut friendly one. So I'm going to grab this guy out here and it looks just like your standard pesto. It's nice and herbaceous. Herbaceous? That's a big word for me. That's a big word for me right now. Okay. <laughs> Give it a little taste here. It's exactly what you want it to be. It's a pesto. Um, the pumpkin seeds add a really nice crunch to it. So it actually still feels like you are getting that pine nut flavor that I was talking about earlier. I think pumpkin seeds can be a little buttery. Like you can, they can add a bit of that same uh, texture, that same sort of, you know, texture, I guess, but that mm. you get from a pine nut, that sort of buttery note, that creamy note. For about an eighth of the cost. Yeah, exactly. Because pine nuts are, are they the most expensive nuts still? Mm, no, I think there? macadamia is, is still the most expensive, but pine nuts, 
the, the source of origin of pine nuts is really skeptical, you know, I'm skeptical of. So many of them claim to be from Italy, but they're actually Chinese origin. And I, I don't buy them unless I really trust where I'm getting them from. Um, so I haven't bought pine nuts at home for quite a while. I can't remember the last time I bought pine nuts, but that's just because I see, I get sticker shock. I look at them and yeah. then I'm just like, or pepitas. And I grab the pumpkin seeds instead, almost immediately. I actually use a lot of almonds. I like in our, um, the Marcona almonds that we sell, oh. those are a really great replacement for um, pine nuts in pesto. They're really buttery, and I think they do, they, they're a really great substitute. Oh, those almonds are, I, I made the mistake of trying one. I was going for like, I went a good like 10 weeks, and I was like, I'm not eating the Marconas, and then I did, and now it's all downhill. Yeah, they're so delicious. They're, um, for those of you guys who don't know them, um, Marcona almonds are an almond from Spain that's harvested and fried in olive oil. And so they're really, they're quite oily to begin with, but yeah. then they're fried in olive oil and then salted and it's ridiculous. They're luscious and beautiful and very, very addictive. Wow, Heather's joining us tonight. She's on fire. She's like, you should be concerned where all your nuts come from. Heather, trust us. We are very concerned of the origin of all of our nuts. It's actually on one of the first things I think about when I wake up in the morning. Yeah. It's, it really is. Other than if it's Scorpio season, you know, I'm really thinking about where my nuts come from. Thanks for being here, Heather. Your contribution's incredibly valuable. So my pesto, I'm just going to have sitting off to the side. I am going to use it a little bit on my crostini. And I like that you said pumpkin hummus because that's pretty much exactly what I was going for. But then I had this thought. Last week we did lentils. I still have lentils in house. And I was going on about how lentils would be great in a dip to make it nice and creamy, to add body to it. So I am using uh, red lentils today in the pumpkin spread to show you how versatile it is. And then again, lentils are chock full of protein. So we're adding a bunch of protein into this dip. Um, could you omit lentils and chickpeas and just do like pumpkin and goat cheese and whip the living daylights out of it? Absolutely you could, and that would be very delicious, but I'm trying to sneak away to make it a tiny bit healthier. Uh, but pumpkin is also really, really, really good for you. It's super um, low in calories, and it's very high in your vitamin K, your vitamin A, uh, beta carotene. Potassium. Did, potassium. Did you know that if you eat too much beta carotene, your skin will actually turn orange? Mm -hmm. It's like I've... I remember telling this story and uh, no one believed me. And I like my sister, I love my sister. She's an athlete. The girl eats like four cups of carrots a day. It's insane. And she actually does. I love you, Max, but you, you, you glow um, in the dark and she knows it. She's got a bit of an orange tint and it's from the beta carotene, but she sees great 2020 vision. That girl, she's got no problems. Um, so pumpkin is very, very good for you. I was testing that theory with carrot cake. Apparently, um, you can, uh, you cannot eat enough carrot cake to do that to you, but I just, I tried can it. Can we try it again? I was taking one for the team, so I, you're welcome. I think we should do that. I would like to be involved in this. Staff challenge. Right? Staff Whatever. challenge. Yes. We're going to see. Don't, who... don't worry about it. I did the research for you, Steph. <laughs> so in the pumpkin spread that I'm making, I've got uh, one cup of roasted pumpkin. I've got one cup of cooked red lentils, and because we are pureeing them, like I cooked these to the point where they're like a little mushy, that's fine. We're gonna be pureeing them anyway. They're gonna break down a lot faster. I've got a couple of spices here. There is some smoked paprika, a little bit of onion powder, and a little bit of cayenne, a little bit of lemon juice, and some water, just to kind of help this whole thing blend and I've got a couple little garnishes here that I'll talk about. But first, my favorite thing, making noise and blending. Now I'm going to watch the amount of salt that I do put into this because I seasoned my pumpkin before I roasted it. I seasoned my lentils but while I was cooking them. So I'm only going to go light on the salt, but we've already learned that I already do go light on the salt compared to... He others shall not be named. You shall not be named. He called you right before. I think it was like it's Thursday and he had to get someone's attention. Yep. So he called. Tisk tisk. Got my lentils in there. All of my spices. Hello. I'm great. How are you? 
Okay, a little bit of lemon juice here, and then I still have my other half a lemon, so if I need to add more, I've got it handy. And I've got a little bit of water here. I'm just going to kind of keep it off to the side and add it as I need to. You're going to add water just so that it processes nice and smoothly. If it starts to get stuck because it's a bit too thick, that's when you add the water. But pumpkin does have quite a bit of moisture in it already. So we may or may not need to use it. We'll see. I'm going to go light on the salt here again. Okay. Keep it PG over there, yeah? Yep. Okay. Don't just checking. Worry. All right. I don't think I'm going to need to use the water. I'm watching it go already. It's whipping pretty quickly. So this recipe would work with any squash, right? Any squash. Yeah. Any squash that you've got. And it comes together so quickly. I don't know why squash and goat cheese are friends. I mean, goat cheese doesn't necessarily go with everything, but it really does go with squash it, for some reason. It, re it does. Squash yeah. and goat cheese are married, and I don't know when or how it happened, but I'm happy it did. Yeah. Are you a goat cheese lover? You are? I'm I not. will put goat cheese on almost anything. I'm not normally, but I do like it on squash or yeah. with squash. Yeah. No, I love goat cheese. I, I, will, I will demolish goat cheese in any shape, way, or form. Fried goat cheese balls. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little bit more lemon juice, but that's more for my liking. I'm, uh, I'm quite acidic, so I like, I like my lemon juice. Another pinch of salt here, and then I'll show you guys how to bring this together. Okay, clean spoon, dirty spoon, transfer. So you're not dirtying 3,000 spoons, which I do anyway. doesn't really matter, but I'm trying to make an effort. That's it. That's all it needs. Now, I'm a big baby. I don't put pepper on my food. I'm a giant, giant, giant baby. So that little bit of cayenne in there for me is kind of like, but it's okay because I'm putting goat cheese on it. So it's fine. It's all going to work out. Suddenly goat cheese is the great equalizer. It's, it is. I mean, when in doubt, goat cheese? Goat cheese it out? I don't know. Please don't ever say that again, Tessa. You a if you make me a t-shirt, I'll wear it. I will wear any t-shirt that you make me. <laughs> so it's got a nice smooth texture here. You really can't taste the lentils at all. They're just kind of there to uh, bulk up the spread. Now, as this sits in the fridge, it will... Um, uh, thicken a little bit as it cools down. But I'm going to put a, oh, put a couple crostinis together here with all of my little things. I didn't even realize it was vegetarian. That didn't even cross my mind. How am I not using bacon today? My oh my. All right. So. I've got a couple little crostinis here. I'm going to lie flat. I am going to start by adding a little bit of the pesto on the bottom. Someone's hungry. Uh, yeah, you're like. I know. I've been on the go. All you're day. being a hawk. Um, so this, if the cayenne in here is a little bit much for you, and it's very little. You mm. could take the cayenne out and yep. just leave it out completely. Yep. But you could um, change the flavor profile of this thing entirely. Mm -hmm. You could add like some, maybe some Mexican chili powder would change it up a little bit. Yep. What else would work in there? You could add chili flakes instead. Chili flakes are a lot milder than your cayenne. But they do take a little bit of time to activate. So it has they to do. sit it for a bit. It would have to sit for a bit longer. Yeah. Um, would you ever add any like of the sort of traditional pumpkin spices to these like cinnamon, nutmeg? Not with the pesto. Not with the pesto. I am putting a little bit of nutmeg in the gnocchi. Right. So that's where that's happening. But for a savory spread, if I'm mixing it with something super savory like pesto, I would stay away from it because it just might be a little confusing. Yeah. But that's a personal preference. Right. No, I agree. So yep. it's kind of up to the individual. 
So I've got that down. I have a small spoon there. No, but that's okay. I'm going to... So if you're having a party, you can make the pesto obviously well ahead. The pesto is going to freeze really well. Yep. The pumpkin uh, puree here, the little dippy thing, how long is this going to last in the fridge? Oh, Four or e five days? Yeah, easily five days. Easily yeah. five days in a nice kind of airtight container. So you can make it well ahead. You can serve it, you know, uh, this weekend for your big Halloween party. Mm -hmm. um, or if you're cooking your pumpkin after Halloween, you can um, roast it and then... Um, would this freeze? Yeah, it would yeah, freeze. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You can also turn it into soup after. The puree. I, the puree. Yeah. I, I can turn any, well, I think you should turn anything into soup. Anything that's left over, anything that you love, just add it to your next batch of soup. So I'm just adding a little bit of goat cheese on top. Now there is a purpose for the goat cheese. Um, it is to kind of add a bit more creaminess to it and to kind of balance some of the flavors. We do have that banging pesto on the bottom. There's a lot of flavor happening. And then the pumpkin itself um, is nice and, well, it's a little spicy, but just to kind of bring everything together on your palate, make it a little bit nicer. The creaminess and the softness from the goat cheese is there. And I love garnish. Okay, I'm a big, I'm a big garnisher. So I'm also going to add some candied pepitas on top here. So all I did for these, uh, I tossed them in maple syrup, a little bit of salt, and into my 400 degree oven for about 12 minutes while I waited for the maple syrup to start to get nice and bubbly. They were raw when you started, right? Raw yes. pumpkin seeds? Yes. yes, they were raw pumpkin seeds. And then take them out of the oven. Don't crumble them up right away. You've got boiling hot maple syrup there happening. Uh, let them cool down and then you break them up and you've got these nice kind of shards of so if you're having seeds. a party and you're serving this as like a little canapé or whatever, um, I wouldn't <coughs> assemble them too far ahead of time. No, they'll get they'll soft. Get soft. Yeah, the they'll pesto. get soft from the pesto. Yeah, that's so nice. Then you get these cute little. Can I interest you in a canapé? Totally. Okay. I'll take this and yeah. um, give it to our guests, and then you can carry on. Gnocchi time. I wanted to get all of the pureeing out of the way so that I can kind of make myself a nice little gnocchi station which I haven't made gnocchi in a little while, so I'm actually quite excited to be doing this. It's one of my favorite things to make. Is it okay? You're making a weird face at me. No, that's, that's a good face. That's a good face? Okay, I'll take it. If it's a good face, I'll take it. Okay. Move all this here out of the way. Did I actually guess right? Are there four of you? Yes! I was just... Trying to make the plate look full. Oh, okay. So, for my gnocchi, I do not need my cutting board. I am getting this out of the way. I'm going to be working right on top of my station, which means I'm going to be making a nice big mess as I do. It's a good thing I don't clean my own dishes most of the time. <laughs> it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. I get grief for it. So, making sure I've got a nice dry station for this, I am going to be working on my tabletop um, with a relatively soft dough, so I don't want there to be extra moisture. I want it to be as dry as possible. But before that, I'm gonna have a sip of my nice dry wine, and then we'll get into it. Okay. So, let's talk about gnocchi. When you're making gnocchi, the most important part, um, kind of what you're focusing on, is the moisture of the dough. You don't want the dough to be uh, too soft or you won't be able to kind of work with it. You don't want it to be too dense or it's gonna be like chewing on, it's just gonna be really chewy. It's not gonna be nice and soft and pillowy. Um, and you don't wanna overwork it, but you don't wanna underwork it. So it can be a little finicky, but that's why I'm here to kind of walk you guys through it. So I've got, about a cup of pumpkin here that I roasted, mashed, and I've been draining. So this has been draining for about an hour and a half, and I've probably got about four tablespoons of liquid that have come out, uh, which is very important when you are making gnocchi. The longer you can have this drain, the better. The more moisture you can get out, the better. I've also got a little bit of ricotta here that has also been draining. Not as much liquid came out of this guy because uh, I scooped it right from the top if you were using the ricotta on the bottom of the container, you would want to let it set a little bit longer. And I just 
pop them in a strainer over a bowl, let it do its thing. Parmesan cheese, a must. I've got some spices here, so salt, pepper, and a little bit of nutmeg that I actually uh, freshly grated. So I don't know how you feel about nutmeg, but I would rather, much rather have a whole piece of nutmeg kicking around than a whole bunch of nutmeg, ground nutmeg. I like grating nutmeg. It's, I feel like it's just got such a different flavor profile and you can smell it right away. And yeah, I mean, I there's know. nothing, it's nothing so compares better. to it really. Yeah, And so you can better. use your microplane to grate it. You don't need a special grater. Even the useless yeah. side of your cheese grater, that yeah. little weird star grater, star thing. That nobody uses. That nobody uses the useless know what's there. side. That works for nutmeg, so yeah. fresh. It's really inexpensive. It'll last you forever. You can grate a bit and then put it back in the cupboard. Yeah, absolutely. That's like this little piece has been going. Probably, I'm going to say this has been being worked on for like a good, I don't know, four months. And there's still like a third of the piece of nutmeg left. So it's, I find it kind of a little bit more, uh, more bang for your buck if you get the nutmeg itself. It's just nice. Especially if you do a lot of pasta. Like cream sauces yes. need a, a bit of nutmeg. Um, any sort of bechamel that you're doing needs yeah. a bit of nutmeg. I mean, it's it's one of those things that doesn't, it, you're not going to be like, oh my God, what's that flavor? Nutmeg. It's yeah. just this note in the back that's really important. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I've got some flour here that I sifted off to the side. I've got an egg, a whole egg that I'm going to whip up. And then, of course, anytime you're working um, with pasta, uh, you want to have some extra flour around, one, to dust your countertop, but two, to potentially adjust your pasta doughs. So another tricky thing when you're working at, with any pasta dough is making sure that, that um, you do add enough flour. And the recipes, sometimes you can't follow to a T. The humidity and the moisture in the room can quite literally affect your gnocchi. So sometimes, you know, maybe today uh, a cup and a quarter of flour is perfect, but tomorrow it, it's not. And I need to add an extra tablespoon or two. So when you're making gnocchi or any form of pasta, don't be tied to what your recipe tells you. Don't be like, well, that's what it said. And now it looks like this and I don't understand. Feel free to keep adding a tablespoon of flour as you need to um, because it does change with your environment. And the more you make it, the more confident you'll be about how it should feel. And yeah. that's what you're looking for, right? Exactly. And then once you know, like, it's just, you just got to start making it. It's one of those things that you got to work with. And then the more you work it, uh, the better you'll get at it. Work it. <laughs> work it, work it, work it. I've got, <laughs> I've had a glass and a half of wine, guys. You should see what I'm like after a bottle. Uh, I've got a little bit of butter here. I've Check got off. some sage. <laughs> and I'm going to make a nice little sage sauce afterwards. But first, we'll make the gnocchi. Okay. Okay. So, in a mixing bowl, with my handy dandy wooden spoon here, I am going to first dip my pumpkin back in the liquid I've been straining it out of accidentally. My pumpkin is going to go into my mixing bowl. I'm going to go ahead and add my ricotta in here. Chef, if you didn't have fresh roasted pumpkin for this, could you use the tin pumpkin? You could use the tin pumpkin, yes. But tin pumpkin um, isn't always just straight pumpkin. Most right. of the time, it's actually a combination of pureed, different pureed squashes, which there's nothing wrong with. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely use the tinned pumpkin. Don't buy pumpkin pie filling. You can buy. Don't buy pumpkin, pumpkin pie pumpkin. filling. Yes, if yeah. you buy the pumpkin pie filling, uh, you are going to have a different experience. That's all I'll say. It's <laughs> just going to be a little different. Yeah. Ugh, gross. Mm. I've got an egg here that I'm just going to very. Not gently. I've been cooking for a long time, but I can't crack an egg. Okay, that's how I feel. Apparently, I should be a brunch cook again. I'm going to whisk this up here. And that's going to go into my bowl. Parmesan cheese. All of my salt, pepper, and nutmeg. And then my flour. Before I add my flour in, I'm going to mix this very well. Um, it's important that you don't over mix your dough. Do you know why it's important not to over mix gnocchi dough? So it's not tough. So it's not tough. What makes it tough? The gluten when it's activated. The gluten when it's activated. Exactly. So when you're making gnocchi, you want them to be soft and pillowy. Which Are you going to play 
culinary trivial pursuit with me, chef? Because I was just I, anyone could answer. <laughs> anyone? Are you sure you? Could I do feel this? like I know all the answers. Like this is not a fair Should I, conversation. Okay, Jenna, you're up next for my next question. <laughs> You'll try. Maybe you will. We can guess. So when you're making gnocchi, the goal is for it to be soft and pillowy. If I were to take all this flour, dump it in right now, and just like mix it till the cows come home, um, it's going to end up being dense. The more you work flour, the more the gluten comes out, um, the chewier it's going to be. Now, if you're making ravioli, spaghetti, whatever, regular old pasta, that's what you want. You want lots of gluten. So that's when you see people really working the dough um, for quite some time. But in this case, we want soft and pillowy. So I'm going to mix this together really well before I add the flour in. And I'm going to try and mix it as little as possible once that goes in there. Trivial? Should we have a trivial pursuit night? <laughs> should we do cooking trivial pursuit? We can do regular trivial pursuit. Where's the fun in that? I don't know anything about regular. Because I'm good at that. <laughs> Jenna needs a fighting chance. So I'm going to start with my wooden spoon here. And I'm doing more of a folding motion. So I'm really just trying to carefully Pull everything from the bottom of the bowl up and over. Once it gets to the point where my wooden spoon is pretty much useless, I'm going to go in with my hands. I try to just get it going before I start with my hands so they're not as caked in dough afterwards. If you've ever had the, the pasta hands, oh, yeah. where it's just, it's a glove. So at this point here, I'm starting to get kind of a basic dough. I'm going to ditch the wooden spoon. I'm going to lightly kind of flour my hands from my excess flour off to the side. And then very carefully, I'm going to start trying to knead this together here. So I'm kind of gathering it from the bottom and pressing it down with my knuckles. So the dough right now is a little bit shaggy, so there's bits hanging off of it. Yes. Um, what do you, like, are you looking for a smooth dough here? How do you know when you need to add more flour? So. You're looking for a smooth dough, and perfect example, right now, it's all super gluey on my hands. I'm pressing my fingers in, and it's sticking really aggressively. That is when you know you need to add a little bit more flour. So in this case, I'm going to have to start adding a bit more flour at a time. You want to be able to work it without it really sticking to your hands. That's kind of what you're going for. But it's never going to be soft and like, um, like smooth like a pasta dough. No. Because of the the starch because from of the, the starch yeah pumpkin or exactly. potato if you're using potato exactly so kind of slowly have you ever made this with gluten free flour i haven't but i did find a gluten free gnocchi that i actually quite enjoyed that i purchased from the store it was shocking actually um, i i feel like if you were to use like a rice flour it might work quite well We've but, done it here with the uh, next gen flour, and it works great. Like with their baking all purpose flour. She's got some really great products. It works products. really well. If, so, if you are gluten intolerant, intolerant. yeah, um, that can work really well with the next gen. Yeah. I think it would be, I mean, gnocchi is probably the easiest thing to make gluten free because its base is um, off of either something else that's starchy, so a potato or a squash. I'm going to add another sprinkle of flour here. And I'm going to actually transfer this to my work table soon. So I'm going to kind of flour my surface here. I've got a pot of water that is off to the side that was full at one point in time, but is no longer full right now. And I'm actually going to get this kind of out of my bowl here so you guys can see it a little bit better. So you're going to roll this and cook it. So unlike mm -hmm. pasta dough, it doesn't really need to rest the same way. No, it doesn't. Because again, when you're, um, it all comes down to the gluten. So when you're resting your pasta dough, you rest pasta dough to give the gluten a little bit of a break because you've worked it so hard. You want to let it kind of relax a little bit before you cook it. Uh, but in this case, again, we're not really trying to form gluten, so you don't really need to rest it because uh, it, hopefully you don't really have as much formed. So it's getting to the point here where I'm able to kind of pick it up and move it a little bit with my palm. It's not sticking to the board. It's not sticking. I do have a little bit here, but I'm going to clean it up. 
It's not sticking really badly to my hand. My hands are a bit of a mess right now, but I'll clean them so you can see. And once you kind of find yourself with a dough that you're able to kind of easily push forward, it's not sticking, kind of stays together. It should be nice and soft, okay? That's what you're looking for. And you wanna be able to actually press into it and still see your fingerprint. I normally tell people when you're making pasta dough, um, I tell everyone to work it until you can press your, dough, your finger into your dough and the dough bounces back because that's the gluten at work here. But in this case, you wanna still be able to see your fingerprint. So I'm actually just going to cheat by cleaning my hands, um, dust my hands with flour, and then I'm just gonna rub it over my garbage can. So I tell people to do this instead of uh, washing your hands when you're working with pasta dough because then you're adding moisture to your hands and you're adding moisture to your dough and it's uh, all downhill. Pro tip. Pro tip. Yeah, pro tip. Yeah, pro tip. Is it? Hot yeah. tip. <laughs> Flour your hands. So I'm going to take my ball of dough here. I've got a bench scraper handy or a pastry scraper and I'm gonna cut this into four very uneven sections. So Chef, how far ahead can you make this dough? Um, could you let it sit overnight? Yep, you could let it sit overnight. You could actually make your gnocchi, you could blanch it, you could boil it, and then take it out and uh, cool it off um, on a little bit of paper towel, drain it off, and then let it sit in your fridge overnight, and then actually pan fry it the next day. The more time it has to rest, um, the better. So, that's salt, that's not gonna help me. Flouring my station a bit more here. So I added probably another three tablespoons of flour um, to the actual recipe. I'm gonna take my one section of dough here, and then you wanna be very gentle, and we're gonna roll this out into a rope, and try to make it as even as I can here. Did you find the no keyboard chef? Are you using it tonight or no? I'm not using it tonight. Okay. We have one, I take it? Well, yeah, we have a whole bunch. Would you like one? I just realized that maybe you didn't know we had them. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I haven't used one in like eight years. Can you show me how to use it? Sure. Yeah. Can you show me up? Uh, probably not, but um, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna <laughs> cut these off here. Using my bench scraper, I'm just kind of portioning them. It's super soft. I'm gonna. Oh, it's super soft. It's super soft. Ooh, the no keyboard might not even work for these little pillows of deliciousness. That's what I like to call them, pillows. Pillows of love. So you just normally, when the dough is a little bit firmer, and this is a beautiful noki dough, but you just roll it down the board and you just get these beautiful sort of traditional lines. No keyboards are really expensive. They're like, I don't know, under $10. And um, you can use a fork, right? You can use a you fork, can use a for fork sure. right? Yeah. Or you don't have to do anything. You can just cut them into pieces and they're yeah. delicious like that. But when you go to an Italian restaurant, I guarantee they've been processed or passed buy a no keyboard and totally uh, yeah this dough's a little bit soft for the board but and you don't want to wash these either they're just they have flour on them you don't want to wash them the wood will soak up um, the moisture from the hot water or water or the dishwasher and it'll start to crack so just make sure it's nice and dry um, and put it away okay. anyhow all there right you go. well yeah. there you go I haven't used one of those in forever hot tip hot tip, hot tip. don't wash your gnocchi board hot mm. tip mm. I need a hot tip can I get a hot tip button? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and drop these guys into my boiling water on my little pastry scraper here. This is my favorite kitchen tool. I could talk about bench scrapers probably more than anyone should. Um, I'm a tornado in the kitchen. And um, I actually, when we film these, I don't know if you guys have noticed yet, but I wear like my jacket all the way up all day so that I don't cover myself in food uh, before these start because of how messy I am. So I love having bench scrapers around because they clean up my big messes. They're also excellent food scoopers, but I'm able to now kind of clean up. I will make the rest of these for you guys, okay? I will make it for you guys, I promise. Now, while my gnocchi is cooking, 
I've got some salted boiling water. Very important that it's salted water. Uh, there's only a little bit of salt in the dough, so you want to make sure you're also seasoning your water. I'm going to take my butter here into my fry pan. And I've got some sage leaves here. Everyone loves some sage butter and pasta. It's kind of like it's a given. And as soon as my butter starts melting, I'm going to add the sage into the pan. It's going to crisp up a little bit. And then my gnocchi over here, I'm going to wait for it to float. And then I'm going to give it another about 30 seconds boiling in that water. And I'll strain it out. And I'm going to add it into my pan with my butter. And that's going to be it. That's going to be our gnocchi. So I'll clean up a little bit here. This is actually not bad. I'm pretty impressed with myself and how clean I am. Okay. Anyone can attest to the fact that I'm a tornado in the kitchen. Anyone who's worked with me anyway. So they're starting to just kind of puff up a bit. Very soft dough. It is going to cook very quickly. Now pumpkins, I was reading about pumpkins. The U.S. produces 1.5 billion pounds of pumpkin a year which is insane, 1.5 billion pounds of pumpkin. And I bet you 1 billion pound, pounds of those pumpkins end up uh, being tossed away or destroyed. After Thanksgiving. After, after, after Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> and pumpkins uh, didn't become a big hit until Cinderella. We can thank Cinderella for popularizing pumpkins. So there's That's another little, little pumpkin fact for you. Who doesn't want to ride in a pumpkin carriage? I mean, it's my dream. It's my dream. Speaking of pumpkins, speaking of pumpkins, guys, we are having an internal contest, okay? I'm really hyped about this. Oh, we are having an internal pumpkin decorating contest with the staff, okay? We have each been tasked to decorate a pumpkin, and we are going to post our pumpkins. We have an example. So this was one that was brought in. I'm not going to tell you who did it, okay? Because that's, you know, that'll reveal. So we each were given a tiny pumpkin to decorate, and we are going to uh, be working on this and submitting our own pumpkins tomorrow. And on the weekend, you guys are going to be able to vote in a poll for whose pumpkin was the best. You're not going to know who did which pumpkin. Mine's going to be the best. I already know. But make sure you check our Facebook page out so that you can see our pumpkin competition I think, uh, this weekend. I think there's a missed opportunity there with that pumpkin. Somebody who made that pumpkin made it a cat face when it's clearly a cat butt. I thought it was a unicorn. Is it not a unicorn? It's, is it a cat unicorn? I think it's a cat. It's a cat. Yeah. yeah some, there's a missed opportunity there. There's, that's clearly a cat butt, but whatever. So my nice little plug there to get you guys Stay vote tuned. for my pumpkin. Stay tuned. You'll know. You'll know mine's You'll know. the cat butt. You'll Maybe know. Maybe that was the best side of that cat. <laughs> Maybe. So my butter is mostly melted here, so I'm throwing in my sage leaves. I've only got about eight sage leaves here. A little bit goes a long way. And my gnocchi just started floating, so I'm about 30 seconds away from adding that into my pan. Uh, if you want to make it more of an actual sauce instead of it just being kind of uh, butter, which I don't know why you wouldn't just want butter, but maybe it's the French side of me coming out, uh, you can always add a little bit of pasta water into your pan. Um, pasta water that's got that leftover starch in there uh, kind of will cook down and make it nice and creamy. So I do have a ladle handy in case I'm feeling the need to add pasta water. Okay. So if you overcook the gnocchi, it'll actually just disintegrate in the pot. It'll melt. Yeah. Yeah, it'll just straight up. I've yeah. melted gnocchi. I've melted. You know what? I melted regular old penne pasta once. You know how long it took for it to melt? Like over an hour. That was when I was in high school in... Uh, what were you drinking? I wasn't even drinking then. Well, no, I wasn't. <laughs> Hold on a second. I was in uh, my home ec class. And uh, I did not want to cook then. That was not my career path. Uh, but I was in my home ec class, and I melted penne. Oh so I'm scooping my gnocchis out. Important to note that your gnocchis will kind of increase in size a little bit. They're going to go, uh, sometimes they double, but they're going to go at least at half of the size bigger than what they were. I'm just going to get these right into my pan. You can see the ones that Angie showed me how to use the roller for. Oh my god, they're perfect. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. yep. You should work at a restaurant. Has anyone yep. told you that before? Yep, I did in the 80s. That was short-lived. Giving this a quick little stir. Now, you could make a really nice brown butter with this, um, but you want to make sure when you are sauteing it, you work a little bit quickly. You don't want it to get stuck. 
Adding a little bit more salt here. Didn't we already establish that the last time I worked in a restaurant kitchen, you weren't even born? Didn't we already have we this We did have this conversation, but not in front of people. Yeah, well. I just made a joke, <laughs> which was not well received. Uh, yeah. No, when you graduated culinary school, I wasn't born yet. Right. And then I laughed. Yeah. There may have been tears, not from me, no. but there may have been tears. That was almost Tessa's last day. Her first day, last day. My Same first difference. day and my last day. Same difference. Okay. So the um, sage can be pretty overpowering. Yes. So I really, I use a very small amount. That same batch of sage I will use for kind of all of the gnocchi as I'm cooking it. And if you really like it, you leave it in the pan, and it'll get nice and crispy. You can use it as a garnish. But I use it really just to flavor the butter. So mm -hmm. if, you were, if you weren't a lover of sage, you mm. could, could you swap that for a different herb in the Absolutely. butter? Absolutely, yeah. You can go for basil, um, a nice crispy basil. But if you're using basil, um, sage kind of holds up in heat a little bit better um, than basil does. You could use rosemary. You could use oregano if you really like oregano. Fresh um, only though, right? Fresh, yes. yes. You want to go for the fresh herbs. Grab myself a little serving spoon here. So gnocchi sort of lends itself, especially the pumpkin one, it lends itself to a little bit of the brown butter action. But mm. do you, are you a fan of gnocchi with like a tomato sauce or a cream sauce or? Oh man, I will eat gnocchi by itself. Chef loves a potato. I love carbs and potatoes. Um, I will eat gnocchi in any form of sauce. I like it in pesto, I like it in a butter sauce. Um, my partner absolutely loves tomato sauce. He makes gnocchi and uh, tomato sauce all the time. Um, and there's also different types of gnocchi. Like this is your basic, um, well in this case it's your pumpkin, but it would be kind of similar to your potato gnocchi. There's Parisian gnocchi, which is uh, whipped and piped and cut out. So that's all flour. And they're normally a little bit smaller. It's more like, to me that's more like a, a dumpling almost. Yeah. 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 So even just by having this sitting in my butter for a little bit, I could have it sit for a bit longer, but I'm starting to get a little bit of my golden color here. So that comes right out. If I wanted to make a butter sauce, this is when I would start adding in uh, my pasta water. However, I have a little bit more gnocchi to make for these guys because they stuck around, so I should probably feed you a little bit. Okay, it just smells like sage in here. Mm -hmm. It smells delicious. It's like, it smells like brown butter. We're getting there. We're almost at the brown butter stage. Okay. And it's really just kind of as easy as that. Do you want to come have a gnocchi? Uh, hello. You come have a gnocchi with me? Have we met? We, <laughs> very briefly, very briefly. <laughs> Then I know. Yes. Come have a gnocchi with me. Tell me what you think. And by with me, I mean I'm going to watch you eat it. There's a fork. a fork. Oh, that's nice. Yep. That's so nice of you. It's going to be hot. Yeah. You're going to see me dragon breath for a second. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's good and salty. It's from the butter, the saltiness of the butter and the gnocchi and the... I can taste the... I don't really taste the pumpkin. Do you? I taste it a little bit. I taste a lot of sage. Mm -hmm. I taste a lot of sage. A little bit of pumpkin. I know that it's not potato. I know that it's True. not a potato gnocchi. But a little bit. Pumpkin is very soft. It's not a really like. No, it's not a strong boom flavor. Boom in your face. Um, this is so delicious. And it's so easy. I think I don't make gnocchi at home. I Honestly, I just, the thought of doing it for some reason is a little bit much for me when I get home from work. I'm like. Well, you don't oh. want to clean up. Like, look at this. Who's I'm gonna clean this now? Did you both? <laughs> we both. <laughs> it's not me. It's not me, I'm not doing it. It's, 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 no, it's not me. <laughs> Jenna, you're up. It's me? Oh, uh -huh. yeah, I have fun. Yeah. Jenna's yeah. on dish. No, David does the cleanup at home, so I don't have an excuse for it. You've been off for six weeks or five oh. weeks, so. She hasn't cooked in five weeks either. Oh, well, it's a good thing you're here, so. Yeah. Mm, I haven't cooked in six weeks. He obviously hasn't. <laughs> paid attention to what's gone here in the last six weeks. Oh my goodness, um, you've been cooking? Anyhow, this is really good. I think 
If you're going to make this ahead of time, you can roll the gnocchi. Mm -hmm. You can actually pop it into the freezer. Yes. As raw gnocchi. Yes. Freeze it. And then when your company arrives, you can drop it into boiling water mm -hmm. and pan sear it. Or like chef said, you can drop it into the boiling water, cook it off, chill it completely, and then uh, pan fry it or add your sauce mm -hmm. later. I think uh, when people, if you serve this to somebody and said, oh, this is pumpkin gnocchi, they would expect it to be bright orange, first of all. Yes. Which it isn't. It's not. Because of the flour. Um, the ricotta. Mm -hmm. So I think this, people would be surprised just first of all by the color of it. But they also would expect more of those savory spices aside from the, the sage. So I think this is something that somebody who's maybe not a pumpkin lover wouldn't order in a restaurant, mm -hmm. but they should. Yeah, because it's not, it's not like in your face. It's not a pumpkin spice latte. No, it is not. It's not a pumpkin spice latte in a bowl. You don't have to make brunch plans in your if you, Lulu's. If you do want to pumpkin it up, though, pumpkin it up. Pump up the, I'm going to stop. Uh, yeah, if you want to add more pumpkin to it, that residual pumpkin that you're going to have left over, if you are roasting a whole one, you can make a cream sauce out of it. The same way, make yourself a nice kind of rich um, bechamel sauce and puree all that fresh pumpkin that you have left over. Make yourself a really nice pumpkin cream sauce. You will get that bright orange color from there. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, I'm not missing the bright orange color. All no, I'm no, but if, but if someone was kind of like... Yeah, where's the, pumpkin? where's the pumpkin? Yeah, make the pumpkin cream sauce, and then you know. Yeah, I'm not missing that color, but I think some people sort of would expect that color. Yeah. But anyhow, I think it's really delicious, and this is a really great technique that you can use with any squash or potatoes. If you're using potatoes, I would just really encourage you either bake your potatoes yes. in the oven to make the gnocchi or steam them. Don't boil your potatoes. When you boil the potatoes or boil the pumpkin boil your squash it takes on too much moisture yeah and your gnocchi will be gluey yeah you're so, really trying to use as much dry heat as possible so the oven is your best bet to kind of get rid of as much moisture or uh -huh, the microwave mm -hmm. you ever cooked your potato in the microwave yeah. yeah yeah and you can do it that way too cook your potatoes in the microwave cook your pumpkin in the microwave yeah that'll work too it gets rid of as much moisture as possible not whole do not, do not whole put a whole pumpkin, pumpkin in the microwave. <laughs> I don't want to be here. You ever been enough. sued for that? No, I'm not going to be sued not today. Yet. Not so, yet. What time is it? Uh, <laughs> so do not cook a whole squash. Do not cook a whole anything without stabbing it first. A potato even. No. Do not do that. Don't do that. It's going to, you're going to need a new microwave oh and it's God. not my fault. Now I'm going to have nightmares about people's <laughs> microwaves exploding with a whole pumpkin in it. So, um. Anyhow, we haven't decided what we're going to cook next week. Um, we have a few options for next week, but we'd love to hear from you about what you would like to, um, to have us to learn or, yeah. or see in the next couple of weeks. We tend to focus on seasonal ingredients, local ingredients. So if there's something specific that you're interested in learning, yeah, let yeah, us know. Let us know. We'd let love to know. hear about it. We'll be back here next Wednesday. Wednesday. So today is Thursday, but we're moving our cooking classes to Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yes. The third day, Wednesday. <laughs> at 6 in the P. So we'll be back here at 6 o'clock uh, next Wednesday. We will likely have more bubbly or some reasonable facsimile, yeah. and there will be some delicious food. So thanks, Chef. Yeah. That was really good. My pleasure. Um, <laughs> Oh, man. No. Oh, I inhaled the gnocchi. So happy Halloween. Yeah, I need to stop saying Thanksgiving. Yeah. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Cook those pumpkins when you're done with the trick-or-treaters on Sunday, Monday. Let us know how these recipes turn out for you, and we'll see you back here um, next Wednesday. But in the meantime, if you're in the store, pop into the kitchen and say hello. What are you doing? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the third, third day. day. The third day. Six in the P. Six in the see P. We'll here. see you then. <laughs> Cheers.